Hi everyone, I'm Stephanie Thomas and this is Mary Thomas. We are from Thomas Thomas and Thomas PC here in Houston, Texas. We are CPAs and specifically we focus on local and state taxes. So thank you so much for clicking on the video. Our big purpose in sharing these videos is that we want to provide information in a simple, concise manner that helps business owners as well as bookkeepers and accountants. And we're focusing on sales and use tax right now. So let's talk about one of the topics that we always get questions about, taxable purchases. Now, some of you don't know what taxable purchases are. It is a term that you always see on sales and use tax returns, and every state has taxable purchases. Taxable purchases are things that you buy that are taxable. That's not very difficult to understand. One thing, but some states don't levy. There are about four states that don't levy a sales and use tax. So this is not about them, obviously. But states that levy a sales and use tax, they do capture your taxable purchases. So get it. Yeah, and I think it's about four states that don't have sales and use tax. So if you're in one of those four states, you know what they are. So you don't have to pay that much attention to this. Now, back to all those other states that do have sales and use tax. Taxable purchases are those items that you purchase, purchase that are actually taxable. The problem is that sometimes a vendor doesn't charge you sales tax on something that is taxable. Think about when you make internet purchases as an individual. Sometimes you're clicking on Amazon or you're clicking on eBay and you see something really cute that you like, so you buy it and it comes to you and when you get the bill, there's no sales tax on it. Now, as an individual, you may be able to say, oh, yay, I don't have to pay any tax. But if you do that as a company, you have use tax that is due. And I make the distinction between individuals and companies because states audit businesses. They don't necessarily audit individuals, unless you're like a big high dollar individual, you may have that issue. But that's not most of us. So, and there's some states that are very aggressive about capturing use tax that individuals may incur. Texas is not one of those states. We really don't have the apparatus to kind of turn that in as an individual. So they really focus more on companies. Um, le legally, you do have a responsibility to give the money to the state. They don't make it easy. And it's not something that they aggressively go out and pursue. So that's why we focus on the businesses. most. We focus on businesses because if a business is audited, they do go in and they do look at the tax or purchases section. And when you look at your sales and use tax return, there is a line item, line item number three for Texas taxpayers, where you specifically are supposed to report your taxable purchases. Exactly. So that nice little piece of equipment that you bought on eBay and you did, they didn't charge you any sales tax, as a business owner, you are supposed to remit the appropriate use tax. And the way that you do that is when you file your Texas sales and use tax return on line number three, like Mary just told you, you're supposed to input that amount that you paid for that taxable purchase. So that, and, and once you do that, you remit that in with your sales and use tax return. Every business has taxable purchases. And if you constantly report zero as a taxable purchase on your sales and use tax return, that is an audit red flag and they know you don't know what you're doing. So when you're making purchases on the internet, when you're buying things from mom and pop operations and they're not charging you sales tax, it is up to you as a business owner to determine whether or not that item is taxable. And if it is, you need to remit the appropriate use tax on your sales and use tax return. Now, Stephanie talked about two things, uh, the internet purchases and the mom and pop operations. I just wanna go a little bit more into that, just simply because years ago, Amazon these days, they're charging you tax because they have an agreement with the state of Texas if you're here, but they're gonna charge you tax. Thing about it is, is that there are other smaller companies that you may be dealing with that don't have a responsibility to collect Texas sales or use tax or whatever taxing jurisdiction you're in. 
that company may not have nexus there. And if they don't have nexus there, they don't have to register to collect that state's tax. That doesn't mean you don't owe it. That means you're gonna put it on your sales and use tax return and you're gonna give it to the state directly. So it's those little internet vendors that don't have nexus, look at their invoices and see if they charge your sales tax. If they didn't, and you know if you bought that item in that state that you would have paid sales tax on it, give it to the state directly. That's your job. Don't, don't give the money to that vendor. There's a reason. There may be a reason that they did not collect that tax from you. They may not have the ability to actually give it to the state. If you do that, you will be paying that tax twice. Because you would have given it to that vendor and that state would not have gotten that money. They're going to come in if they audit you, they're going to assess it again. So that's one thing. The other thing about the mom and pop things, and specifically, we see this a lot on Texas audits. You'll have people who will purchase janitorial services or landscaping from you know, a friend or somebody who kind of does it on the side. They're not an employee, they're a third party vendor, but they're not collecting Texas sales, they're not collecting Texas sales tax. You still owe the tax on that. So you would have to, that, if you really like that person, that person isn't registered, you don't have to make them register. Just report the value of the services that you purchased for them on your return and give it money to the state directly. And if they're, and if they're ever audited, just give them the proof that you did it. That, and that is a very important point because if you decide, if you determine it, well, hey, John should have charged me sales tax when he came in and cleaned the office, but he didn't. So I'm just going to calculate what it is and, and send it to him. If an auditor comes out and audits your business, they're going to say, well, you know, that's nice that you gave him a tip of 8.25% if that's the appropriate tax rate. But he wasn't registered to collect any Texas sales tax, so we never got that money. We're going to assess it again. And the other thing that, that we talked about as it relates to taxable purchases is internet purchases as well as those small mom and pops. But there is another big thing, especially if you're doing, if you're making big purchases, Sometimes vendors don't necessarily know their sales tax responsibilities correctly, and they may not charge you the appropriate sales tax. Some, some of our bigger issues as it relates to that relate to software purchases, yes. where that software provider may not know that they should have charged you the appropriate sales tax, that they were doing something that was taxable. Software as a service, those, it, little, those apps. Your exactly. Apps, your use of those apps. Or there have been instances where people will take generalities like services aren't taxable. Well, there are there are little bites at that. In Especial Texas. Special carve-outs. Special carve-outs where and things that some people think are professional services have elements of data processing to them. Yes. Data processing is taxable. So it's a whole lot of subtle nuances to, to a lot of this, but the big takeaway is. You need to understand the taxability, not only of your, your sales, when you're making sales to customers, you also need to know the taxability of the purchases that you're making, because that can come and bite you too. And keep a trail of what you, of how you calculate. And we're going to cover this in a subsequent video, your documentation needs, but you always want to have something that can demonstrate to an auditor that comes in three years after you file this return that, hey, I reported taxable purchases of ten thousand dollars. Forty five hundred of it was this invoice. A thousand of it was this invoice, and the you know the forty five hundred that's left over was this invoice. You always want to be able to trace back what you reported. So, and I mean years later, because the statute of limitations in Texas is four years, it varies three to four years in all jurisdictions that levy the tax. Nobody remembers that, and depending on what's going on with your systems, you may have changes in accountants. You may not have somebody there who can actually say what that is if it's not written down. So the big takeaway in this is not only do you want to be compliant and look at your invoices and report the tax that's due directly to the state, because that's going to be the best thing for you. You're going to, you should have a clear trail of what went where. You also are going to have to have the documentation of how you got that number.
Exactly. And, and as Mary told you, we're going to talk about documentation in another video because nobody wants to, to try to recreate the sales tax return four years out or, you know, after you've had a systems conversion or you've cleaned out your warehouse. So just keep all of that in mind. So I think that's everything that we want to talk about with tax for purposes. You got anything else you want to say? No, that's it. Just pay attention to what you're doing. That number should not always be zero. Your biggest, your biggest exposures are going to be out-of-state companies and little mom-and-pop operations. Uh, it's also going to be if somebody is coming to you and they're saying, you know what, I got a feeling that this might be taxable, listen to it. Exactly. Because it might be something there. And you want to always, always remember, you want to pay the tax when you have the money to pay the tax, not years later and not when it's an avalanche of stuff. Exactly. And the other thing is when you're making big ticket purchases, always, and I say always make sure you understand the taxability treatment. Don't assume that that vendor has that correct. So I think that's it. That's it. That's it. So thanks everybody for watching the video. If you liked what you saw, please thumb us up. And we would also love it if you subscribe to the channel. So thanks everybody. And if you have any questions, we will be paying attention to the comments section and we'll get back to you. Have a good one. Have a good one. Bye.